It's your chance to run the country your way. It is time for If You Were Prime Minister. And today we're turning your attention to Brexit and asking, would you have a second Brexit referendum? It's been just over eight years since Britain voted to leave the European Union following negotiations in Brussels. David Cameron made an announcement asking Britain to cast their votes on whether they should leave or stay in the EU. Leaving Europe would threaten our economic and our national security. Those who want to leave Europe cannot tell you if British businesses would be able to access Europe's free trade single market, or if working people's jobs are safe, or how much prices would rise. All they're offering is a risk at a time of uncertainty, a leap in the dark. Three years ago, I committed to the British people that I would renegotiate our position in the European Union and hold an in-out referendum. Now I'm delivering on that commitment. You will decide, and whatever your decision, I will do my best to deliver it. Now, a recent poll found that around 65% of Brits say that in hindsight, leaving the EU was the wrong choice. Just 15% say that the benefits of Brexit outweigh the costs. And former MP Tony Blair is calling for a PM, sorry, former PM Tony Blair is calling for a second European referendum. He's labelled the government's Brexit strategy as dangerously irresponsible. Do you agree or is it time that we just move on? 0207 862 2222 and we'll speak to you in just a moment. I'll turn to the panel first. Kevin, would you vote for a second referendum? Yes, and I'd vote to go back in, but I, if I was a party political leader, I wouldn't be proposing it now. Why? For, because I think it would dominate a general election campaign and it would probably dominate your government when there's lots of other things to do. But we're better informed now because we know what it really means and people can see all the trade barriers. There is no, or there never was, any extra 350 million a week for the NHS and wait until the autumn. When to go on holiday in Spain or Italy or Greece or anything like that, you're gonna to have to be fingerprinted and pay a fee up front. But can you just keep having referendum after referendum just because it didn't really work out? Oh, I, th I, think, uh, I think that's an argument against having one now, but not having one down the line. I think the only way you could go back in is either a referendum, because you had a referendum to come out, or you make it absolutely explicit in your manifesto at a general election that you would take the UK back into the EU, assuming the EU would have us, um, because they're not as interested as we like to think. Uh, but if you made it explicit in your manifesto, so people knew if they voted for you... Essentially, you they would be voting it. for another Yes, yeah, but you'd have to make it absolutely explicit. But when we, ca when we came out in that, in that uh, referendum of 52 48%, Brexit meant so many different things to different people. Mm. Uh, we, you know, we'd, ne we'd never worked it through what the deal was going to be. There was no oven ready deal, as Boris Johnson pretended. And people can, people can see it now. And they see the downsides, and some people yearn for the upsides they've lost. What do you well, think, well, Wilfred? Would you have I a second think, referendum? I, I think having another referendum to decide to go back in would be as disastrous as having the referendum in the first place. What we have do you think the first uh, referendum no, has been a disaster? I, I was somebody that voted for leave. And I just thought that by leaving, and if we did what you should have done when we left, which is to move fast, the only benefit of not being part of Europe is that you're able to act independently and move fast. We never, ever took that advantage. Well, hold on, no, part of it was also to control our borders. But All of those sort of things, that we, we, that, that's what the referendum had given us the opportunity to, and it actually got caught up in that quagmire of what you can and you can't do. So in that sense, it has been disappointing, almost disastrous. But Europe is very, very different now than it was at the time of the referendum. Would we want to be part of the Europe that we're now seeing? Look what's happening in, in France in terms of how the right has really started to take a big positioning. In terms of the things we have in this country that we take for granted, like diversity. Britain is one of the most diverse countries in Europe. Do we want to be part of a, a continent where they're still struggling in what type of country they want to be? So 
it's a bit like a marriage. When, when, when you divorce, stop looking about all those things that were good. We've also got to remember the reasons why we wanted to get out in the first if, place, if which you, is that we're very different. If you, if you don't want to be in a European Union with France, do you want to be in a NATO with France? Well, I mean, I think the difference is this, basically. In, in all of the stuff that um, being part of Europe allows us and being able to travel, people working and all that sort of stuff, therefore, in terms of how we operate in, in culturally, those things are going to have a much bigger influence. Is that a yes or a no? Well, no, what I'm trying to mm. say is that being part of Europe is different mm. from being part of NATO. Mm. So you're happy to be in... I'm happy to be part of NATO. Despite everything that's happening yeah, in France, but, yeah. but you wouldn't be in the EU. Would you? The, no. Yeah. OK, 0207862222 is the number. If you were Prime Minister, would you hold a second Brexit referendum? New polls suggest that 65% of Brits feel that in hindsight it was a bad idea to leave the EU. I just want to quickly run through what each party has said in their <coughs> manifesto on this subject. So the Conservatives want to seize the benefits of Brexit by signing more trade deals and say that thanks to Brexit we have taken back control of our borders and laws. Labour has ruled out rejoining and wants to seek a better deal with Brussels on trade, research and development, defence, security and education. Labour has also committed to remaining a member of the ECHR. The Lib Dems want to rejoin the EU but have stressed that it is a long-term objective. Reform want to renegotiate a harder Brexit, scrap all the EU laws and rip up the Windsor framework. And the Green Party wants to rejo rejoin the EU, although it doesn't give any more real information on that, I don't think. Uh, James from Ayrshire, you're up first, you're Prime Minister. Are we having a second Brexit referendum? James. Yes, I'm yeah. here. Hi there. Uh, your Prime Minister, are we having another referendum? I would absolutely, yes, have another referendum. What was now, that? Um, yes. Yes, you would. Why? Um, I worked in continental Europe for around about 10 years, mostly Germany, but some other European countries. Um, we had lots of agreements we get um, like taxation and allowances and everything like and I could travel freely and work throughout Europe and, and I cannot do that anymore. My no. children cannot or neither will my grandchildren. But we have better control of our borders and sovereignty? No. <laughs> so you do you agree though with Wilfred that trying to re-enter the EU if they will have us, even if a referendum came out that most people would support going back in, would that not just be equally as difficult and laborious as trying to exit has been? Um, like you, Storm, I'm Scottish, yes. and Scotland voted to remain in Europe. Yes. However... That was denied us by Westminster. Yes. If I was Prime Minister, I would be a Prime Minister that would say I would respect the Scottish vote. OK, but you, in respecting the Scottish vote, you would be ignoring um, the rest of the UK. Thank you for your call. Bill from the Wirral, what's your view on a second referendum? Uh, good morning, everybody. Good morning. And... Firstly, it's the rules on referendum that I wish to talk about. Okay. And I am 77, and I did not vote in the 2018 referendum, and that was deliberate. 16. I felt it was immoral that I should have a second vote when I voted in the 70s to vote out, by the way. And I over 65 at that time should never had a second vote. OK, so you think that there should be a longer period of time than, say, what would that have been? F nearly 50 years, 40-something years? Yes, basically it's the rules around the referendum rather than the outcome of the referendum, I'm arguing. And I don't believe that people who have had one vote in a referendum should be allowed to vote in a second referendum. 
So cool. when, you, when we're talking about once in a generation, we really are talking about each generation having their chance to have a vote. That was a big debate around the Scottish referendum. What was once in a generation? Is it 10 years? Is it 25 years? As far as Bill's concerned, it's once in a lifetime. Yeah. You get one chance to have that vote. Yeah, it's, it's t generally thought to be between 20 and 25 years because the next generation you know, is when you have children, mm -hmm. really. That's what, that's what it's right. And you're right, in the case of Scotland, it was said once in a generation, they lose, the yeah. nationalists lose and they want to come back, which I which they I said was 10 years then, yeah. I think, which would have been... And then there's an argument against them. But, but Bill, I, it certainly was a case that you know, it was all about the future. And so people who are nearer the coffin than the cradle were, uh, tended mm -hmm. to vote to come out, while those who are younger tended to vote to stay in. But I think in a democracy, it's, it's one person, one vote. And I, I would not want the likes of, of you to be banned from voting should there be another referendum. Whereas, Bill, you'd be quite happy to not vote again. I would definitely not vote again because, as uh, he's just said, it would be for the generation to come to get the effects of it. Bill, thank you very much for your call and bringing that up. Andrew from Aberdeenshire, how do you feel about a second referendum? Would you be in support of it? No. <clears throat> I voted Remain in the last uh, referendum and I believe in democracy. And the people voted, although maybe everybody didn't you know the full picture. But as long as you've got the major parties refusing Scotland another referendum, why should we have a referendum for Brexit? And it went to the stage that they actually took it to court to block the Scotland ever having another referendum. So, yes. Uh, Andrew, I hear the comparison you're making between the two. I suppose we did leave the EU, so that's a big move. 65% of people, in hindsight, think it was a mistake if polls are to believe. Now, if in life we make a decision to do something, we realise it didn't work to our benefit and we would like to change that decision, we would. So why in politics do we not offer ourselves the opportunity to do that? Because we're living in a democracy. Yeah, but you would and be the, opening the people... up for a, a conversation again. We've left, we've seen the effects. It's been eight years since the vote. And... and Maybe it's time to, to change that. Well, why are you not a conversation with Scotland? They're all refusing point black. I, I voted for independence in Scotland, but I'm not going to allow to make a decision on that to the extent it went to court to block it. Yes. So they, I don't they, see the difference. They certainly do. I suppose that's because they, they've got the deciding mm. vote on whether Scotland gets a, a, a referendum or not. Andrew, thank you very much for your call. You wanted to jump in yeah, there? Yeah, I was, I was just going to ask Andrew if he if he thinks it's democratic to have another referendum on Scottish independence, uh, does he think it's democratic to have another vote on being in or out of the European Union? In a democracy, you're entitled to change your mind. You're entitled to vote as many times as you like. It, may, you know, it all, but is it, becomes is it politics. sensible to have referendum after referendum after referendum? No, probably not. And that, that's, okay. a, that's a decision you'd have to... Okay, you know, but, that's a judgment call you have to make. But it's not anti-democratic to we, have another vote. Okay. But what we're talking about, you're talking about, is going backwards... What you, anything you're going to be vote for is that what, what will be the benefit of us going back into Europe? What is going to be the advantage rather than going back to what, what you, was? What you, the 4% economic growth we'd have, which is about worth 100 billion plus. You mean that? Or the frictionless trade so people can import and export uh, better? Do you mean that? Or do you fa mean the fact you could spend more than three months and every six months in, in Europe? Do you mean that? It's do you mean it won't, you won't have to be fingerprinted? Do you mean that? Okay. I mean, there's loads it, of reasons. The immigration yeah. has become a really hot topic when it comes to this election. And is it true that there's something to do with a Dublin agreement, which would mean that if we re-entered Brexit, I, I know there's counter arguments to this, that we would be able to take illegal migrants back to France. Fra French it, it borders. Was when we were in the Europe, easy, when it? we were in the European Union, it was called the the, the, Dublin, the, agreement? the Dublin Agreement, mm -hmm. and it was you were allowed right under UN law. Which may be a reason allowed, why people yeah. would want to call for a second exactly. referendum. And that's the reason. Re I, I, refugees I bring can travel through other safe countries to their destination, but you can under the Dublin Agreement say no, sorry, you can't stay in the UK. You have to go back. And to so, France. do you think France will allow that? Especially what's going on in France, they're going to be happy. Probably with not. But they used to they used to take can, people back. It used to be in the hundreds or low thousands. Thousands max, but then there were a few people coming across that way. Uh, Andrew, thank you very much for your call. You started a huge conversation there. Marie in Glasgow, what's your view when it comes to a second referendum? Yes, the sooner the better. Because Scotland was dragged out of it because of Westminster. OK, but Just Scotland... Just like James and Andrew. Scotland is part of a United Kingdom. It. It's part of a Great well, Britain. And so 
it's part of a democratic I'll, system I'll that did vote for it. I'll definitely thing me. Right, we're supposed to be the UK storm, but if I go to Blackpool, I can't use my bus pass. And we're supposed to be the UK. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you've got a fair point there, Marie. I yes, didn't know that you yes. couldn't use your bus pass. Also, no, it's quite hard to use Scottish notes. That is very annoying. Yes, yes. They'll look at you as if you've got two heads. <laughs> they <laughs> certainly do. Scottish note. OK, so I'm starting to get the feeling, Marie, maybe you would be also in favour of Scotland having a referendum of their own for independence again. Oh, yes, yes, so, definitely. And would you the then... The quicker we get rid of Westminster, the better. OK, and then would you be for Scotland joining the EU if that happened? Yes. Got you. Marie, Because it's, it's more expensive to bring goods in now. Yeah, Marie, Marie, that's that's absolutely right about Scotland leaving the European Union, more expensive to bring goods in, but Scotland does far more trade with uh, England, Wales, Northern Ireland. Uh, that would be more expensive. Why would you do that? Because I'm Scottish. Mm, yeah. and the quicker we get rid of Westminster, the better. Marie, thank you very because much. Because they're all Muppets down there. <laughs> well, yeah. Unlike the Scottish Parliament. <laughs> uh, Susan from Lancashire, what's your view on this? Would you vote for a second referendum? Well, I don't think there's any point because I'm with Wilfred on this. Mm. If you see what's going on in Europe, mm. um, the unrest, the far right, I think it will break up anyway. Were you, were you a Leave voter or a, reform, uh, a Remain voter, do you mind me asking? Well, I was a Leave voter, but it wasn't to do with Farage or... or um, and it, it, it was to do with other things. I'm just wondering, it, as a Leave voter, are you happy with the consequences of Brexit? Are you happy with how it's been conducted? Well, I'm not happy with the way it's been conducted, but I certainly don't want to join an organisation with the far right that's going on in these governments. Mm. in Europe. All right, OK. Mm. Uh, even though Kevin ran through some of the benefits potentially of... Being part of NATO, is coming, it so to justify uh, having all our right as our NATO? No, that was, that was a separate question. I think, oh. I think, I think uh, uh, Storm is referring to the 100 million plus penalty we're, we're paying, 4% uh, off e economic growth in the long run, and the fact that it's easier to travel and trade. That's, that's what she was referring to here. But, Susan, yeah. it, it's still uh, in favour of just keep going with um, what we're doing at the moment. Thank you for all your calls on this. We're actually getting so many. We're going to take more after the break. So we'll go straight to those phone lines and we're going to speak to Howard from Swansea. Howard, would you have a second Brexit referendum? Oh, yes, indeed I would. Oh, um, you, you yeah, would. Abs abs absolutely. Uh, I think Kevin's probably right. It uh, wouldn't be right at the moment because, um, you know, it would be something of a destruction, perhaps. But, I mean, Brexit, um, democracy didn't end eight years ago, did it? No. Uh, we've we've made, we've obviously made a big mistake, mm. and it sh it ought to be rectified. But I suppose and, uh, the conservative, when it comes to this country, the the conservatives have always said that we're better together to keep the United Kingdom. Well, I think we're better off in Europe. And another thing, you don't get even the far right Italian uh, party, um, 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 what's the name, uh, Giorgio Maloney's party. They don't want to leave anymore after they've seen what's happened to our country. Well, Howard, is there an argument to be made that once you make a decision as big as leaving the European Union, it takes a little while for things to settle, for the dust to settle, for the red tape to settle, for us to all forget about the, the negativity involved in the vote and look at bettering our trade relations. Maybe it just takes a little bit of time. And the problem with having a, a referendum within a 10 year period is maybe, or, or continuously having these referendums, is you're constantly flip flopping. So you're always in a transition period, no, which is terrible for the no, economy. Please. No, please. I mean, the damage that's being done to this con country is enormous. It's costing the country 100 billion a year. The, uh, the Conservatives, every time they, they say that there's something going wrong with this country, they mention the pandemic, which, which cost the country 2% of GDP. But the damage that's being done by Brexit is 4% of GDP. 4% mm. of GDP. It's costing the country 100 billion a year. Mm. And for example, you take the Horizon Project, where uh, we were... We were um, having um, the benefits of, of funding. Science was having the benefits of funding from Europe. Yeah. Then we were put out, and now they've allowed us back in, but it's costing us 
I think it's costing 18 million a year to be back in. Uh, Howard, there there I are just, no benefits I, for Brexit. I just want to put some of your points to uh, Wilfred. What would you say to Howard? Look, I think one of the things that people keep talking about is practical stuff. The big decisions we make in life are not to do with the, the practical realities, it's to do with emotionally. Mm. And what we were doing talking about um, before the break is this, is that the UK compared to the rest of Europe is very, very advanced in terms of our attitudes towards diversity, which is a big thing for me. And I think what we need to be looking at is that we are very, very different to the rest of Europe, very, very different. And I would much rather that they came towards where we're yeah, at Europe rather than thinking that nice. we're going back because wait, wait, wait. actually trade is going to be Hang better on. and it's easy to travel. There's going to be bigger things, I think, that we need to be considering. Look, look, look it's... Uh... We were diverse. We were diverse before when we were in. Exactly. Uh, is France not France? Are they not French? Yes, they are. Are the Germans not Germans? Of course they are. Are the Dutch Dutch? Of course they are. The Spanish Spanish? Yes, they are. And they're all in the European Union. You don't lose all that when you're in. I, th I think Howard just made a string of very, very good points, including the lasting damage is double that of COVID. That, they're figures from the Office for Budget Responsibility, the official economic watchdog in, in Britain. So that's a vote for a second referendum there, Howard. Thank you for your call. Janice from Essex, you're Prime Minister. You've got the keys to number 10. You're making all the decisions. Do you have a second referendum on, well, I suppose it would be going back into the EU? Absolutely not. Why not? Just because we've messed up the first one, it doesn't, it will take about another 15 years for us to get straight. As far as I'm concerned, and I'm sure your gentlemen that are there uh, understand that there's problems with Croatia and Serbia. You've got Putin, and I really think he's going to take the Balkans. Germany is not what it used to be. France is in a blooming mess. Mm. They've been inundated with migrants. We're all getting it. But I can't believe that people want to go back into that mess. All we need well, to do, we needed a government that could have done the job properly. Oh, and you think that it was actually how it was conducted is the problem with Brexit, not actually leaving the European Union itself? Absolutely. Janice, Absolutely. Ja we still haven't got our fishing properly. We're still under their rules. We need to rip them up. Okay. Ja Janice, the biggest group of people in Britain who've lost in trust in politics are those who voted for Brexit. But this is Brexiteers falling out with each other and blaming each other because, of course, Brexit was done by Boris Johnson, who, along with Nigel Farage, was one of the, the powers. Weren't you just sold a Britain that never existed? I think I was sold a Britain that was free. Because you're still under people who we haven't elected and they decide what size your ear is going to be and what you can do. Well, I wanted a free elect? England. Free England. You don't but we Scotland? never got it. What you about don't... Scotland or Wales? Northern Ireland? Sorry? Do you, do you want Scotland or Wales or Northern Ireland? If they want to, if, if Scotland, Wales and Northern Ireland want to break away from England, that is their prerogative. OK, so you, but England is your main concern there, Janice. I just wanted to confirm that. Uh, uh, can I ask, when it comes to the Brexit vote, looking back now when we heard things like uh, the microwave oven ready, whatever it was, meal deal, do you feel like you were sold a, a lie or do you believe that you never really thought that stuff was true anyway? Um, I like to think that we were brave enough and we had decent people and clever people that could look at all the um, things that they are shoving at us and we could rip them up and then just go and say, we're on our own, we'll decide our future. But we're still being decided by the EU. So, in effect, we haven't left. OK, mm. all right. Janice, thank you very much for your You know, call. all the stuff you're talking about, the things we were sold back at the time. Look at what's happening in this particular general election now. The things that people are saying, which we know, we all know that after the election, all these promises are not going to be met. Do, because... do you think we do all know that? Do you think well, that people uh, are voting uh, knowing that part of the pledges that these parties are making may not come true? I think that we, we're we cynical or we're, we're, we're sensible enough to know that what people are saying now ain't necessarily what's going to happen once they get elected. I'll, I'll, I'll be, I'll be sceptical rather than cynical, but of course you get, another, you get another vote in four or five years' time. I'm yeah. not saying a referendum every four or five.